Well, hello, welcome back to Tail Tree Cabins. This is my second attempt at doing this video. The first time I came down to Southern Ohio, we're working on building a new house on our property next door here. And I'm staying in my RV right now. We're off the grid. It's been raining ever since I got down here. I came down here on a Monday. Today is Friday and today is the first day where the sun has come out. I tried doing a video a couple days ago. The sun had come out, it was kind of in the evening and I started going over these solar panels. And then about 20 minutes later, it got dark again, the skies opened up, it started raining. So I'm just starting everything all over again. I knew I was gonna be down here for the week off grid and I brought a whole bunch of portable power stations with me and to recharge those I was counting on solar. So today I got a lot of work to do since the sun came out to try to recharge all these power stations today. And I thought I would test out this Moken 120 watt portable solar panel. Now I have some hard suitcase solar panels and they're pretty heavy, they weigh close to 50 pounds and they're quite a bit to lug around. And after using these portable ones, I'm really liking the portable ones for RV and for travel, especially for camping, light camping, where you don't need a, a, a lot of wattage. Portability and packability, everything comes into play when it comes to these suitcase type solar panels. It's pretty simple. In the front here, you have a uh, little case and inside the case, it's gonna give you uh, three different ways to connect. So here is an XT60 connection. And here is barrel connections for some certain power stations. And then here are your Anderson connections. Also for the barrel connections, there's a multitude of adapters just in case. You should be pretty good when it comes to just about any power station to having some sort of adapter to just plug directly into that power station and start charging things. So when you open up this incorporated case, you not only have your multitude of adapters, there's also a little hub here that will power a USB-C device up to 65 watts of power. And then it has two USB-A ports here. And then it has a port for your connections into whatever power station you plan on outputting this power into. So that's convenient. You don't even need a power station if you want to start charging your phone or your laptop or some other USB type device. In here also if you notice there is one of the kickstands is mounted in here and this is the center kickstand and they're pretty easy to adjust. Um, there's just has a snap. It has a taunt strap. There are three positions on this kickstand to get you different angles when you're trying to get your best uh, angle of the sun. So pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to take down. Let me close this up real quick. The handles on this are magnetic. As I said, it's portable. It comes in at around 11 pounds. That is a lot lighter than carrying around 50 pounds. It's 120 watts and we're gonna test that out. One of the things that Moken boasts about these panels is it's 23% efficiency. And that might sound weird to say, hey, these are only 23% efficient. But most solar panels out on the market today are in the range of 18 to 20% efficiency. And what that means basically is this is a 120 watt panel and it's gonna give you 120 watts and we're gonna test that in a little bit. But if it was more efficient, it might give you more wattage for the size. And if it was less efficient, it's gonna give you less wattage. Now, if you took two different panels and each one are 100 watts, and let's say this one over here is 25% efficient, and this one over here is only 20% efficient. Well, the one that is 25% efficient is gonna be noticeably smaller. Now, efficiency doesn't come into play too much when you're talking about a roof panel system because you have a lot of real estate up there on the roof. And it doesn't matter if these panels are gonna be a couple square inches smaller or larger, and if the efficiency is a little bit greater than the other one. That really doesn't matter up there. You really don't wanna spend the extra money on more efficient panels because you got plenty of real estate usually up on a roof. But when it comes to these portable suitcase type panels, you'd wanna have efficiency because it cuts down on the size for your packing, for your camping, squeezing it into an RV somewhere. So that's where efficiency comes into play. So a few other things about these panels, it's IP65 water resistance. So you could have these out in the rain. Of course, you don't wanna dunk them in the water or dunk that uh, hub in the water, but you can keep them out in the rain. Although I don't know why you would wanna be trying to charge something in the rain, but if you wanna leave them out overnight while you got them set up, you should be just fine with that. These this has an ETFE laminate on here, and that's a better, longer lasting, more durable uh, lamination on the top. So the sun will not degrade it as quickly as some of the other cheaper panels. And also it will reduce some scratching. So if you're out there looking for portable solar panels, make sure you look for the ones that have ETFE on it because they are more durable and longer lasting. So let's get these set up and we'll do a couple tests and see if they really can output 120 watts. 
It's a pretty clear day today. It's about uh, 10.30 in the morning. We'll try it right now and then we'll try it a little bit later around noon. I'll hook it up to a power station and see what kind of wattage we have coming into it. Also, I'll show you the setup real quick. So I'll just give you a shot from the rear real quick. And then I'll spin these around and put them into the sun. Try to get a decent angle. This particular power station does use a barrel connection and I had to use one of the adapters for it. So I'm gonna plug it right in here to the power station and then I'm gonna bring this other end to the hub. About 10.45 in the morning. I may not have the best angle for it. I'm getting 105 watts coming out of these panels into my power station. If I were to put a hand over this end panel here, it's going to shade it a little bit and reduce that down to 83 watts. Now, if I move that hand over here, it doesn't make a difference. It's still about 82, 83 watts. Shade both of these panels, it drops down to 59 watts. 62 watts, 55 watts. All right, so it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Actually, it's about 10 to two in the afternoon here. We got the sun almost right overhead. Found the perfect angle and I was able to get 123 watts out of these panels that are rated for 120, which is pretty nice because most panels that I've tested, trying to supply power in my pole barn or taking it on the RV trips, that you never seem to get the rated capacity of those panels. You're usually shy by maybe 10% and sometimes a little bit more than that. But this is great that you can get the full 120 out of this. Now, if I wanted to keep pumping out the maximum capacity of 123 watts, I would have to be following the sun around and probably hope that these don't heat up too much. But uh, I was able to do it, and uh, I just wanted to share that with you. So I'll leave some uh, links in the description below about where you can find these panels if you're interested in them. And if there's any discounts or any codes like that, I'll leave that in the description also. But for now, that's going to do it down here. I appreciate everybody watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing to these videos. Click on that little bell when you want to know when a new one's coming out. And to keep an eye on us. Take care, everybody.